Hey everybody, I'm Bruce. Welcome to another episode of What AIO Loves About the Ocean. This episode of What AIO Loves About the Ocean is called The Sea is Silent because I want to talk about one of my favorite phyla, the phylum Cnidaria. And as you can hear, the sea is silent. The phylum Cnidaria, or more commonly the Cnidarians, include corals, jellies, or jellyfish, and sea anemones. I'll talk a little bit about the group, but I, then I want to introduce you to the common sea anemones found in Maine. Cnidarians are relatively simple invertebrate animals. They have few organs, no gills, for example, and they get their oxygen right through their body wall via diffusion. Corals are made up of individual units called polyps that are linked together at the base. The corals that form coral reef systems make calcium carbonate skeletons that they can pull into and protect themselves. Here's a real coral picture from Belize, a brain coral. Jellies or jellyfish in the most common phase of their lifestyle are kind of like one polyp but turned over and we call this form a medusa. Jellyfish, just like corals, can be brilliantly colored. Sea anemones are a single polyp. Unlike corals, they do not make their own calcium carbonate base to live in and on. Instead, they stick themselves to a rock. And here's a brilliantly colored Caribbean anemone. The phylum is most known for the presence of the stinging cells. The cell itself is called a nidocyte, which also has a C that's silent but inside contains kind of an inside-out barbed tube called a nematocyst. The tube has toxins associated with it that sometimes can be deadly dangerous. You can see the nidocyte on the left is ready to fire, and if you touch that little wand on the top, that will spring the trap, and then it turns into the one on the right with the tube going inside out, exposing you to the barbs and to the toxin. Sea anemones also have stinging cells, but most are so small they cannot penetrate our skin. And this is because they feed on small zooplankton in the water column. Probably the anemones that are best known are the anemones associated with the clownfish. The clownfish find protection within the tentacles but are not themselves harmed by them. I think there was a movie about a clownfish. Sea anemones, like corals and like the jellies, also come in a variety of different colors. In Maine, there are three common sea anemones found in the near shore on intertidal waters. These are the northern red anemone, the silver spotted anemone, and the most common is the frilled anemone. The northern red anemone varies in color from lighter to darker, but always has shades of red. And even though this one is pretty small, and this is actually a group of anemones, and you can see they're small because there's a quarter in the lower right corner, it gets a little bit bigger, maybe getting up to six centimeters or more uh, tall. The silver spotted anemone is my favorite anemone, and it's a little bit smaller, only getting to about four centimeters high. This is also the anemone that's most endangered on the main coast because it may not survive the warming of the waters. The frilled anemone is the most common and also the largest, up to 10 centimeters tall, and it has fine tentacles, as you can see, and there may be more than a thousand tentacles in a frilled anemone. This picture, by the way, was taken from the AIO staff tank last summer. 
Let me sum everything up with just a few anemone fun facts. They can occasionally move. Even though they stick themselves to a rock, they can get unstuck and even flex and then sometimes get float, floated away by the current. Usually they do this in order to escape predators. Some sea anemone species do form colonies similar to corals, but most of them are just single polyps. Also, sea anemones like coral often have symbiotic algae living inside them, and this accounts for all the different color varieties that you see. And my favorite fun fact, sea anemones can sometimes put off these little strands of stinging cells, not through the tentacles, but through their body wall, and these are called aconchia, and this is the last picture I have here. As a sea anemone, you can see the tentacles at the top, and these kind of looks like spaghetti stinging cell ribbons off to the side, and they use this to protect themselves from predators. Just want to finish up by saying a round of thanks to the people that provided me some pictures. Miranda Williams of AIO fame. Most of the anemone pictures were hers, and I took a few pictures from Unsplash, which is a free use picture site online from those three photographers. The last picture I took from a scientific publication, Lam et al. down at the bottom. If you want more information about the Acadia Institute of Oceanography, go to acadiainstitute.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe thing so you don't miss the next episode of What AIO Loves About the Ocean. Thanks, everyone.